dear students of uh, ninth standard nowadays we are discussing about matter around us unit 10 in your science book uh, which is a chemistry portion uh, and before going to start a new topic i would like to ask some questions from the matter around us what you have learned up to this simple question define matter define matter matter is anything that has mass and occupy space matter is anything that has mass and occupies space and I will classify the matter based on chemical composition, pure substances and the mixtures, pure substances and the mixtures. Then what are elements? Elements are the substances that are building blocks of all materials elements are the building block of all materials and what are compounds compounds are two or more elements combined chemically to form a new substance this new substance is called compound also we have discussed about difference between element and compound and mixtures mixture it is an impure substance it contains two or more kinds of elements or compounds are both physically mixed together in any ratio also we have discussed about differences between compound and mixture then types of mixture homogeneous mixture heterogeneous mixture homogeneous mixture nothing but mixture in which the component cannot be seen separately is called homogeneous mixture and heterogeneous the mixture in which the components can be seen separately is called heterogeneous mixture. Also we have learned about the separation of mixtures, different methods based on the properties of the components. Sublimation. Sublimation is nothing but a direct change of state from solid to gas example ammonium chloride camphor then centrifugation it is the process of uh, separating fine insoluble solid from solid liquid mixture using the machine called centrifuge then solvent extraction this is used to separate two immiscible liquids based on the principle of difference in solubility then simple distillation it is a process of obtaining pure liquid from a solution it is a combination of uh, distill uh, distillation is uh, a combination of evaporation and condensation then what is called a fractional distillation that we are going to discuss now the fractional distillation is nothing bad this method is used to separate two or more miscible liquids which do not differ much in their boiling points two liquids are more than two liquids which are miscible in one with another and having boiling point 
டிஃபரன்ஸ் பாலிங் பாயிண்ட் டிஃபரன்ஸ் லெஸ் தென் டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபைவ் கெல்வின் பாலிங் பாயிண்ட் டிஃபரன்ஸ் இஸ் லெஸ் தென் டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபைவ் கெல்வின் ஸோ சச் எ டைப் ஆஃப் மிக்சர்ஸ் கேன் பி த எலமெண்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் மிக்சர்ஸ் கேன் பி செப்பரேட்டட் யூசிங் திஸ் ஃப்ராக்ஷனல் டிஸ்டிலேஷன் மெத்தட் திஸ் இஸ் த பிரின்சிபல் டு செப்பரேட் டூ ஆர் மோர் மிஸ்ஸிபிள் லிக்விட்ஸ் விச் டூ நாட் டிஃபர் மச் இன் தியர் பாயிலிங் பாயிண்ட்ஸ் பாயிலிங் பாயிண்ட் ஷுட் பி லெஸ் தென் டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபைவ் கெல்வின் தென் ஓன்லி ஃப்ராக்ஷனல் டிஸ்டிலேஷன் இஸ் எம்ப்ளாய்டு தென் நார்மலி திஸ் மெத்தட் இஸ் யூஸ்ட் in petrochemical industries to separate the fractions of petroleum product to separate the fractions of petroleum also this is used to distill alcohol distill alcohol so in these two method the fractional distillation is applied then next one chromatography before we discuss the technique we will take a look at the difference between two important terms absorption and adsorption absorption a b absorption next one a d adsorption what is adsorption it is the process in which the particle of a substance is concentrated only at the surface of another substance substances are concentrated at the surface of another substance in the absorption it is a process in which the substance is uniformly distributed throughout the bulk of another substance so here one substance is uniformly distributed on the another substance that is absorption one example is given when chalk is dipped in ink the surface retain the color of the ink the surface retain the color of the ink due to adsorption at the same time the ink goes deeper into the stick due to absorption so both the process are take place here when you going to insert the chalk in the ink the color of the ink going to be take place on the surface due to adsorption then the colored molecules while the solvent of the ink goes deeper into the stick due to absorption when you break the chalk you can see that uh, there will be a white from inside the chalk stick uh, will be white from inside only outer side is going to be covered by color of ink so chromatography is also a separation technique it is used to separate different components of mixture based on their different solubilities in the same solvent and there are different types of chromatography and one method we are going to study here that is a paper chromatography and this method is used to separate different colored dyes in a sample ink for example if you take black coloring the black coloring is uh, not prepared using a, a only one type of uh, dye it is uh, prepared using more than two types of dyes dyes means coloring agents coloring agents so if you put a, a drop of uh, ink the piece of chromatography paper the paper is set into suitable solvent that is uh, and you see the picture the paper is placed in the suitable solvent the black ink separate into constituent dyes you can see in the diagram the black ink is first a drop of black ink is put into a, a strip of chromatography paper then it is uh, inserted in the solvent now see the black ink separate into different constituent dyes so as the solvent going to increase 
through the paper. The dyes are carried with it and begin to separate. Begin to separate. They separate because they have different solubility. This is the basic principle of chromatography. Different solubility in the solvent. So and adsorbed to different extent by chromatography paper. So this uh, paper chromatography of uh, black ink shows the black ink contain three different dyes. You can see three different spots in the chromatography paper. So black ink is prepared using three dyes, three coloring agents. So this is a type of a separation technique. And what is the principle? It is used to separate the different components of mixture based on their different solubility of the same solvent. This is the principle. It is used to separate different components of a mixture based on their different solubilities in the same solvent. This is the principle of uh, chromatography. Then, next topic, solution. So, solution is nothing but, it is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Homogeneous, already we learn. Homogeneous means, the components cannot be seen through our naked eye. We cannot differentiate the components in the mixture. So it is a home that means the components are uniformly spread uniformly spread in this solvent we cannot separate the components easily so in a solution the component present a lesser amount by weight is called solid larger amount by weight is called solvent so two things are given first you have to note down what is called solid solid is the component present in lesser amount by weight. Solid. Solid means the substance used for substance which is going to dissolve. For example, sodium chloride, common salt, sugar. So these substances are solid which are going to dissolve in the solvent. So solid is always going to be lesser in amount compared to the solvent. Then what is solvent? That is going to be a, a larger amount by weight. Larger amount. Solvent is the substance used for dilution. The substance used for dilution. For example, water. Water is used as a solvent to dissolve sodium chloride or sugar. So the solvent is always going to be larger in proportion, larger in amount by weight. Amount by weight. So what is solid? That is the component present in lesser amount by weight. What is solvent? That is the component present in larger amount by weight. This is called solvent. So there is a simple uh, uh, illustration. That is the equation. You can represent this in, the, in a form of equation. Solid plus solvent gives solution. Solid dissolved in solvent which will give a solution. For example, salt, sodium chloride, when you dissolve in water, you will get a salt solution. So, salt is solid. Salt is the substance that is going to be lesser amount by weight. Water is solvent that is going to be larger amount by weight. Then only we will get a, a homogeneous mixture. Homogeneous mixture. Then types of solution. Based on the particle size of the substances, the solutions are divided into three types. So, based on the size of the substance in the solution, particle size, particle size, based on the particle size, we are classifying into three types. So, now see the activity. Take a bottle containing sugar, starch and wheat flour. So, three uh, bottles we are taking or three beakers are we are taking in three beakers first beaker contains sugar second beaker contains starch 
third one contain wheat flour add one teaspoonful of each one to a glass of water and stir well leave it aside for about 10 minutes what do you observe so now see we are taking water and dissolve it and we have to wait for a minute wait for 10 minutes and we have to observe what will happen whether the taken a solid what are the solids here sugar is a solid starch is a solid wheat flour is a solid so these solids are separately taken in three beakers and what is the solvent here water is the solvent we are taking water in all the three beakers so when you go into stir while using the uh, teaspoon and we have to check whether after 10 minutes we have to observe and check and which beaker contain homogeneous mixture homogeneous mixture which beaker the solid particles are not dissolved and which beaker solid particles are completely dissolved see normally when you are going to see the first beaker which contains sugar 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 is going to be completely dissolved in water completely dissolved in water we cannot identify the sugar particle from the solution we cannot identify the sugar particle from the solution so sugar in water give homogeneous mixture homogeneous mixture and starch so the starch particles will not go into dissolve starch particle will not go into dissolve you can see two different phases you can see two different phases so this is going to be a, a not a, a uh, type of uh, homogeneous mixture it is not uh, uh, in the form of true solution because we can see the particles easily through our naked eye and also in third one wheat flour so wheat flour will not dissolve wheat flour will not dissolve and uh, the wheat flour is going to be slowly descend down and settle at the bottom of the beaker settle at the bottom of the beaker you can identify easily the wheat flours are settled uh, in the form of uh, uh, mud in the form of a precipitate at the uh, at the bottom of the beaker so second and third beaker will not give a homogeneous mixture will not give a homogeneous mixture so based on this only we are going to classify the types of solution into uh, true solution and colloidal solution and suspension we are going to classify it into three types true solution colloidal solution and suspension so first one that uh, sugar give always true solution that is uh, uh, components cannot be easily seen then second one which is going to give a uh, colloidal solution that is a starch in water and wheat flour that is going to be a suspension that is going to be a suspension so based on the solubility of uh, particles in the solvent three types of solutions are obtained now we can see in the next one see we can see that in the case of sugar we get a clear solution and the particles never settle down so this is called a true solution this is called a true solution so true solution is nothing but true solution is a homogeneous mixture which we cannot identify the component easily through our naked eye then in case of starch and water we get a cloudy mixture we get a cloudy mixture so this mixture is called a colloidal solution then third one in case of wheat flour mixed with water we get a very turbid mixture and fine particles of uh, wheat flour are settled at the bottom this is called a suspension this is called a suspension so there are three types of uh, solution true solution colloidal solution and suspension and suspension then what are the differences between true solution colloidal solution and suspension so here it is given the major differences the major differences is the particle size particle size in fact interconversions of these mixtures are possible by varying the particle sizes by certain chemical and physical method see first one 
that is going to be the first diagram the particles are very very small in size which are going to be uh, true solution second one is going to be colloidal third one going to be suspension see the particle size is less than 10 power minus 7 centimeter in true solution the particle size is less than 10 power minus 7 centimeter those particles in the diagram it is given in diagram we, get, we are able to see but actually uh, in the nature we cannot see the particles we cannot see the particles through our naked eye see for our uh, understanding it is given then second one colloidal solution the particle size is uh, between 10 power minus 7 centimeter to 10 power minus 5 centimeter 10 power minus 5 centimeter which is going to be a turbid form of solution that is going to be a colloidal one then in third one particle size is greater than 10 power minus 5 centimeter so the particles are uh, slowly settled down for example when chalk powder is dissolved in water chalk powder chalk powder will not dissolve in water chalk powders are going to settle down you can see easily uh, through our naked eye the, the, the settling of chalk particles that is called a suspension so the main differences between this uh, type of solution based on the particle size based on the particle size now see colloidal solution a colloidal solution is a heterogeneous system but see already we learned about a true solution true solution is a homogeneous system but colloidal solution is a heterogeneous heterogeneous means the component can be easily seen through our naked eye consisting of a dispersed phase and dispersion medium dispersed phase or dispersion medium can be solid or liquid or gas there are eight different combination possible in table 10.4 the combination of gas in gas is not possible because gas in gas always form a true solution so here it is given in a tabular column how these uh, colloidal solutions are formed based on their physical state and two things you have to understand in heterogeneous system two phases are there two phases one is dispersed phase another one dispersion medium dispersed phase dispersion medium so based on this dispersed phase and dispersion medium eight type of uh, solutions are given in the tablet column eight type of solution so first one see solid in solid so dispersed phase is solid dispersion medium also solid so medium means normally that is a uh, solvent dispersed phase that is solid first column says the solid second column says the solvent solvent next uh, type of uh, uh, mixture and third one example so solid in solid solids are dissolved in solid example solid solution uh, what are the examples see alloys alloys are nothing but uh, uh, it is a, a mixture of uh, metals uh, or metals with non metals like that the gems uh, colored glasses how colored glasses are prepared using this type of uh, colloidal mixing then solid substances dissolved in liquid solid substances dissolved in liquid that is a, a type of solution for example paint ink uh, egg white all these are uh, example for this uh, solid in liquid the solid in gas aerosol smoke dust the smoke always consisting of uh, fine particles along with the gas fine particles along with gas the liquid in solid liquid and solid gel curd cheese jelly or example the liquid in liquid emulsion milk butter oil in water liquid in gas aerosol mist fog cloud the clouds contain the 
moisture liquid type of water molecule on gas then gas and solid solid foam cake bread so during the preparation of cake bread they use sodium bicarbonate during the baking the sodium bicarbonate release carbon dioxide so these carbon dioxides are going to give softness to the cake or bread uh, so the gas is uh, along with the solid in bread or cake then gas in liquid foam soap leather aerated water aerated water is nothing but it is a soda water soda water soda water how they prepared the carbon dioxide gas is dissolved in water with a high pressure so gas in liquid that is called aerate so these are the eight different classification of colloids based on their physical state of dispersed phase and dispersion medium dispersed phase and dispersion medium then see next one it is called a brownian movement when colloidal solutions are viewed under powerful microscope it can be seen that colloidal particles are moving constantly and rapidly in zigzag direction the brownian movement of particle is due to the unbalanced bombardment of the particle by the molecules of the dispersion medium so what is a brownian movement brownian movement is nothing but the colloidal particles are always migrate from one place to another place in the colloidal solution so the particles are migrate migrate because of the unbalanced bombardment so these particles are in unbalanced uh, condition in the solution so these particles are constantly moving rapidly or constantly moving here and there that is given say zigzag direction zigzag direction so this continuous uh, movement of uh, colloidal particle in the solution is called brownian movement so this was uh, observed by robert brown so based on his name it is given brownian movement brownian movement so brownian movement is nothing but the unbalanced bombardment of the particle the last uh, three lines you can write in the form of definition brownian movement of particle is due to the unbalanced bombardment of the particle by the molecules of dispersion medium dispersion medium then next one is called a tindall effect tindall effect so this was observed by tindall in 1869 when strong beam of light is passed through colloidal solution the path of the beam become visible this phenomenon is called a tindall effect and the illuminated path is called a tindall cone this phenomenon is not observed in case of true solution so in colloidal solution the particle size is uh, more than 10.7 and 10.5 cm 10.7 cm to 10.5 cm so because of this uh, more increased size of particles the beam of light scattered the beam of light scattered that we see the path of the beam become visible the path of the beam become visible because of the scattering of light by colloidal particle so you can write simply the scattering of uh, light rays by colloidal particle the scattering of uh, light rays by colloidal particle is called tindall effect and this illuminated path is called tindall cone this is because of the observer tindall and this type of uh, effect will not be take place in the uh, true solution or in suspension so this brownian movement and tindall effects are possible only in colloidal solution only in colloidal solution because the size of the particle is more than 
10 power minus 7 centimeter more than 10 power minus centimeter than the true solution so the beam of light coming from headlights of vehicle is due to Tyndall effect blue color of the sky is also Tyndall effect because of this uh, scattering of light you have to understand Tyndall effect is nothing but simply you have to understand that is scattering of light rays by colloidal particle scattering of light rays by colloidal particle that is called Tyndall effect then next topic it is given see the differences between types of solution differences between uh, types of solution that we will see in the next class so up to this uh, you have to learn thoroughly and also note down in your uh, class work when the lesson is going to be completed we will dictate the question answers the question answers you have to write uh, the short answer and detail and uh, hard questions for all those uh, you have to uh, write classwork you have to write question with answer in your classwork and these classworks are going to be checked we are we will be called one day and uh, you have to produce your notebooks so uh, learn thoroughly prepare well write and practice Thank you. God bless you.